Um, okay, I'd like to invite um, Asif Bengal. Um, he's our Australian panel convener for overhead transmission lines. So as, uh, uh, as Angela said, uh, name is Asif Bangor, I work for Jacobs um, and I represent the B2 panel, overhead lines. So whatever you've heard from uh, Russell, uh, you know, we're going to take it up in the air and, and transmit it across interstate and, uh, you know, we, we do the exciting bit above ground, which is obviously, you know, connecting underground. So that's us overhead lines. Uh, so a bit about our purpose, uh, we, we are designers, we are engineers, but uh, as Alex said earlier, the whole theme and the whole approach has now changed. We're no longer looking at it from a design, reliability, maintainability perspective. We're also looking at, uh, you know, uh, it doesn't state here, market design. How, how do we as overhead line designers, network operators, uh, working in the B2 panel, how do we affect policy? And I'll talk a little bit about, about that, because that's a very interesting part of our uh, working area. How do we look at risk? These are the things that you would probably not hear uh, a, a typical uh, you know, a transmission line discussion forum talking about. But now, in these last couple of uh, uh, years, we've seen a change, uh, especially because of the extreme weather events and the extreme scenarios that we have been living. And I'm sure all of you have been witnessing bushfires, flooding, uh, wind events, you would have seen uh, these massive overhead transmission lines, uh, you know, experience failures and you would, seen, uh, you would have seen utilities, regulators come into discussions on how to, uh, one, fix, how to, uh, you know, uh, mitigate the risk, how to talk about who bears the cost. So all of those things effectively come into play and we as overhead line design uh, people, I'll call it, I'll make it more wider, not only engineers, people who are interested in that product, that, that uh, asset base are now talking about. So uh, the, the technical information is all there. You know, the, the two or three key bits that come out are policy regulation, all linked with extreme events, all linked with aging infrastructure. Uh, as we heard in the earlier presentations, you know, we were talking about 40, 50 year old assets and transmission lines the, 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 the couple of towers that I've actually te uh, checked are probably over 70, sometimes even 80 years old. So how do you, you know, how do you deal with a aging assets in a changing environment? Market, regulatory, weather, so all of these challenges are what we in the B2 panel talk about. Uh, over here you would see things like, uh, uh, you know, manufacturing, reliability, refurbishment, so all linked with, uh, with, with the safe operation and construction of these overhead lines. And by far overhead lines have a very integral part to play in this energy supply chain. We, you know, we're connecting the generator with the user and obviously, you know, connecting on large, uh, you know, uh, topographical uh, uh, routes and corridors has another challenge uh, which effectively comes with community consultation uh, and especially in Australia we, we were, exper were experiencing that in the recent uh, couple of projects that you would have heard about uh, the renewable Western Renewable Energy Link. Uh, we have uh, a PEC project. We, we've got so many new new bills that are happening uh, as we speak which Australia hasn't seen for the last so many years. The last major transmission line 500 kV perhaps in Victoria was uh, 1979 when it was tested in Sydney I, I still remember reviewing those, those reports so uh, imagine this is the first time in 20 years or, uh, plus that we are building such long transmission lines and literally going out to the farmers the the uh, you know the local councils and talking to them in terms of how large a tower would look like and the first question gets asked put it under the ground we don't want to look at it but, you know uh, underground <laughs> and Russell's going all clap but guess what still we, we, we will have to live, live with overhead lines in somebody's backyard albeit we will have some sort of a mechanism where people will be compensated so I'm, I'm sure market dynamics is, is moving towards that policy framework. Um, going forward uh, so this is the admin stuff I'll just quickly we, you've, you've heard Alex and you've heard uh, obviously Russell talk about it um, and others. 
B2, uh, the B2 Overhead Lines Committee is effectively comprising of SAG, Strategic Advisory Group, CAG, Customer Advisory Group. Basically what the CAG does is collate all the terms of references. If you have a fantastic idea, uh, feel free to let me know and I'll raise it up to the CAG and say, hey, we, we can form a working group and this is the working group and, and they'll obviously talk to us in regards to writing the TUR and then getting it approved and, and so and so forth. So the, there's an important role that the CAG play. They also do the surveys and, and try to get feedback from you, from the, the community in terms of what should be looked at in terms of focus areas. The technical advisory groups are TAG 4, 5, 6 and 7 looking at individual specifics of the technical challenges of electrical performance, uh, foundations, insulators, mechanical behavior of conductors, asset management. Now, all of these tags have got multiple working groups within the tag. So you would have a typical, typically a convener of a tag, and that convener will have a secretary that will assist him or her in, in doing the administration work. It's, it gets pretty heavy when you think about uh, over a dozen working groups per tag, which effectively need to be reported up through to the chairman, uh, and, and especially with the uh, with the technical brochures being published. So there's a lot of pressure on the tag conveners, and all of the working group conveners report into the tag conveners. And then we have some task forces with the joint wor advisory working groups listed in there. Um, this is the uh, a photo of the uh, uh, outgoing and the incoming leadership team, which, uh, like uh, in the in the case of, uh, case of B1, we had a change of leadership. The persons on on the left, uh, Mr. Vivek, he's the new appointed secretary. Um, uh, person standing next to Vivek on, on on the left, second to the left, is uh, Mr. Pierre Van Dijk from Hydro Quebec. He's the uh, new uh, chairperson, and on uh, standing next to him is Mr. Herbert, who's the outgoing uh, chair. And the, the, the person on the extreme right is Mr. Wolfgang, uh, he, he was the secretary. So a uh, change of leadership now in, in, in B2, and uh, I must say it was, very, uh, uh, it, it was very interesting to see that change of uh, leadership, a lot of support, a lot of encouragement, uh, and, and by far the handover was done seamlessly. Um, some, some stats, some facts for you. Regular members from 20, 24 countries, observers from 17 countries, 25 active working groups as we speak. Uh, around 600 technical people in all of those working groups across the globe, 48 countries. Uh, one thing I must say, 7% female representation is perhaps not as what I would want to see. Uh, in my own uh, panel B2, we've only got three. So you can imagine, it's a, we have a lot of work. I was talking to uh, uh, you know, a couple of colleagues earlier, we have a lot of work to do in terms of uh, encouraging female participation, you know, getting the, the next generation into. So I've even encouraged my own daughter to join civil engineering in RMIT and say, hey, you know, you're, you're definitely going to get a job in Seagrade. <laughs> so <Yeah>. there you go. <laughs> so uh, there's a lot of work that we need to do, all of us. And, uh, and by far, that 7% should become more than 50, I would say, uh, you know, in a couple of years' time, hopefully. Uh, we had a couple of awards. Uh, we had a technical council award for a, a, a person um, called Dr. Balint Nemeth from Hungary. We had a fellow award and some honorary awards for Mr. Herbert. So it was quite a uh, you know promising participation from the B2. Uh, publications we've had the Green Book pub published recently, uh, and this might be actually interesting for us because as we build newer lines, especially in the snowy mountains and in areas in Australia which traditionally have not seen ice loading and now with the weather change you know we, we do have ice challenges so this was published recently techniques for protecting overhead lines in winter conditions and talks about range of mechanical and electrical aspects so I would encourage those who are looking into ice especially in New Zealand we have a lot of ice loading um, the other publication was in Liveline that's a very big subject area uh, that the B2 is looking at how can we access transmission lines, especially high voltage in live line conditions? Can that cut down the uh, overall cost? Uh, can it be done safely? What are the challenges on the electric field, EMF, and other requirements for our workers? So it, it goes without saying that you know, live line and electricity work that we do is uh, you know, life threatening if we don't do it properly, safely, correctly. So live line maintenance is one of those uh, aspects which is heavily looked upon, and this is a new publication that was uh, recently carried out. We have uh, some new working groups as listed in there. We've got a working group on asset management. We've got the live line working group again in terms of some safe guidelines. We have uh, uh, another working group that was proposed for bird safety. 
and uh, you'd, you'd uh, probably laugh at this, but yes, that is an important area, uh, especially for overhead wires when you see a flock of birds traveling and what damage they can do. So yeah, we, that's another working area um, and some techniques on overhead construction methodologies. So those are the five uh, uh, working groups that are being currently uh, approved in the process. Uh, Paris overview, I, uh, and perhaps this is feedback for Alex live uh, over here is, the papers that were actually published and, uh, and, and transmitted across, I had to go through each paper, extract the keywords out of those papers individually. The actual PDFs were named with a code number. So, uh, you know, getting the code number is one thing, but if, if I transmit the code number to the participants, they just read a 10101-2. Nobody knows what it is. And imagine you've got 200 of these. So I had to go in and extract each each paper, the keywords, and, and there you see the, the listing. Six papers were on electrical, 19 were on hardware, 11 was on inspections, uh, 16 were on safety environment, and 13 were on structures. So you can see the, the depth and the breadth. You've got hardware, you've got electrical, you know, inspections, you've got obviously environment. The, the, the key standout was hardware from what I could see because people are now interested in knowing what, what's out there, what, what can we do in terms of new hardware. And that's a photo of uh, a, a test case of a DLR equipment uh, that was happening in Turkey. So they, I, I actually picked up this box, this, uh, this DLR box, it was pr probably around uh, seven or eight kg. So it's quite, quite lightweight and it does a lot of measuring temperature, conductor, etc. cetera. Um, an important bit for Australia, weather cases and weather modeling. Japan, uh, as we said earlier, has experienced uh, you know a lot of failures, such as in the in Russell's case, you know uh, c cables moving in seismic activity. We have problems. Uh, sorry, Japan has problems in overhead lines when they're experiencing extreme weather events, like the failure stats that you see there. They've got a number of collapses due to extreme weather events, and Japan has actually done a lot of work in weather modeling, which perhaps we also need to do uh, in Australia. And I'm I'm sure there are consultants and there are. Uh, scientists and, and universities doing this, but probably it's not that prevalent and we need to get there uh, you know, very soon because guess what, if we're connecting New South Wales and South Australia a thousand kilometers, uh, you would imagine uh, all of the, not all, but majority of the failure events that we've experienced in Australia is in a region called Region A, which is 43 meters per second and uh, this region is not cyclonic. But guess what, all of the failures that we've experienced, or majority of them, I apologize, I keep saying all of, majority have been in this region. Uh, so there's a lot of work that we need to do in weather modeling, especially for long transmission lines. Um, another quick uh, uh, overview of the papers, asset management, uh, system rating. So these are all papers that I sort of segregated into those sub-themes. Uh, and for those interested, I can share that information with you later on. Paris, uh, sorry, Perth. Perth and Paris, P. So Perth, we had uh, our annual B2 Perth meeting. Uh, actually, just uh, uh, last couple of weeks ago, I was up uh, in, in Perth. We had a number of delegates uh, come across ANZ, and it was a fantastic session. We had over uh, two days, three days, actually. Day one was uh, the working group session, where we had 30 people. Day two was technical presentation session, where we had 40 plus, I think, 15 visitors. So that was a quite large session, 55 people. And day three was a technical tour, and you can see some photos there. Uh, that uh, On the picture on the extreme left is the uh, legacy B2 convener, then myself, then John McCormack, who was uh, the, the last convener who I took over from, and then the two secretaries uh, standing next to John McCormack. Um, we, what did we do in, in Perth? We had a number of uh, uh, presentation sessions. We had a keynote speaker from Western Power, uh, Gail Lansborough, executive manager. Uh, he talked about the challenges of the WA market and how Western Australia, Western Power are doing their bit. Um, and we had a number of papers presented. On, uh, I did a, pre a presentation on network resilience, extreme weather events. Uh, then we had helicopter practices by John McCormack. Uh, we had uh, the, the future of the Australian grid, grid 500 kV, uh, presented by Glenn Stapleton from PowerLink, um, which is a big subject matter as we speak. You know, electric field strength and 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 uh, the whole electric design of our future transmission lines, and a couple of other papers that were presented. Uh, we had over 20 presentations, as you can see. 
Uh, and that is the last slide. So thank you for your attention.